So you stated that you'd be willingly open to collaborate with Bernie Sanders. So I wanted to know what that would look like. Would that be a Sanders Stein ticket? Uh, has he answered your response? Can you give us some details on that? So uh, we are open, you know, to all possibilities. And there will obviously be some, you know, administrative constraints on whatever plan we might hatch. Um, and, you know, the main problem, the weak link in this chain is where does Bernie stand? And Bernie has not responded. I'm not holding my breath, I must tell you, because the Green Party has been inviting uh, Bernie to have a conversation about independent progressive politics for um, since 2011, since wow. before its last race. And that's included, you know, snail mail and phone calls and email. So, you know, it's pretty clear Bernie has not been interested. And, and while he's been, you know, nominally an independent, since he's been in Washington, he's pretty much been working with Democrats, caucusing with Democrats, and not looking favorably on stepping outside of the Democratic Party. And that's where we part ways. You know, we agree on a lot of our agendas, especially our domestic agenda. We're a little bit on foreign policy, but he's evolving there, so he could wind up in the same place, especially if he wasn't constrained by the Democratic Party and its ties to the war profiteers. Uh, I think he would come around and do the right thing. But the question is, you know, is he willing to go beyond those circles? And he has not been willing, you know, at this point at any rate, to talk to me or others in um, independent political um, circle. So, you know, fingers crossed, maybe this is a big, uh, you know, um, uh, a, a wake-up moment uh, for him, given how incredibly, um, you know, uh, unethical and uh, unacceptable the behavior of the Democratic Party has been towards his campaign and its efforts to sabotage him. And unfortunately, this didn't start with Bernie. You know, the, the Democrats have a long history of allowing progressive candidates to be heard for a while and then uh, basically sidelining them in all kinds of uh, vicious and unsavory ways. So Dennis Kucinich, for example, had a very principled campaign, but the Democrats redistricted him and got him out of the way in that way. You may remember Howard Dean who uh, at the time was a progressive, I'm not sure he is right now, <laughs> but at the time he was a progressive and he was a peace candidate, and the Democrats went after him with a public relations smear campaign, the so-called Dean Screen, which took just a moment of enthusiasm and made him look like a madman and splattered it all over the airwaves and brought him down in the polls and basically knocked him out. Same thing with Jesse Jackson. Um, you know, who was made out to be an anti-Semite after he, on the strength of the civil rights movement, he was going full bore and had won about 12 major Midwestern primaries, and they sabotaged him. So, you know, this isn't an accident. The Democrats created superdelegates after a peace candidate was elected in 1972, after George McGovern got elected. Right. Uh, they resolved that they would change the rules so that you could never have a grassroots candidate elected again, and they did that. That's why they created the superdelegates and the Super Tuesdays, to basically knock out uh, grassroots candidates. And that's how they've been knocking out Bernie. If we had a truly open system... That wouldn't be happening, but they've been able to use the power of the machine in the way that, you know, the Super Tuesdays are, you know, uh, they just pile on the, um, you know, the, the primaries so that even while Bernie's done an awesome job of fundraising through grassroots, they've still been able to exert the power of the machine um, just, you know, using the old boy and old girl, I guess, networks. Um, to rally support for Hillary beyond, you know, beyond anything Bernie could do with his uh, fundraising. You know, and, and if we had primaries one at a time, that wouldn't be the case. You could really have a campaign go in and meet the people and, um, you know, and really make the case. But that doesn't happen in the current system. So we'll see if this is a wake-up time for Bernie. But, uh, you know, from the way it's looking, I'm not so optimistic because it looks like a major effort is being made to kind of corral people back into the Democratic Party. 
And I think it's a really important time for people who are not, you know, good little boys and girls and who are not into the ethic of just taking the marching orders from the uh, Democratic machine to really think twice before just kind of abandoning all the work that um, you've done inside this you know, revolutionary campaign, it may turn out that the revolutionary campaign, you know, cannot, you know, live inside of a counter-revolutionary party, which the Democrats have been for a long, long, long time. Um, And really important for people, I think, to think outside the box and keep the heat on and see if we can get Bernie to move outside the box. But if we can't, you know, I think we got to keep moving forward, you know, because... Democratic Party, you know, is not going to do it for us.